What is going on everybody? Um, so I know it's been a while since we did a, pr a project for the RX-7, but um, today I'm gonna make some more progress on the brakes. Uh, the front brakes should be much easier than what we had to do on the rear brakes because we don't have to deal with the parking brake. Outside of the, the calipers, the only thing I'm gonna need is the rebuild kit. There's the part numbers for that. So other than that, I'm gonna need um, some compressed air to help push out the pistons. Um, a block just to help stop, you know, because one of the pistons may come out before the others and then it'll release all the pressure, making it difficult to get the rest of the, the pistons out. So I'm going to get the compressor set up and I'm going to get these pistons out of the calipers. For my first attempt at getting these pistons out, I have the compressor set on 100 PSI and we're basically just going to force air into uh, where the brake line connects into the caliper. So there's, there's no, everything else, you know, I still have the the bleeder valve and everything else on there. So basically what I'm gonna do is try to wedge my, my blow off tool into the, the hole and, and create a seal and then pressurize it. And right, like I said, 100 PSI to start with, it may take more, but um, I'm gonna put this piece, this block of wood in here just to stop the uh, pistons from coming out. They may come out with some pretty substantial force. So I, I've tried to get as much of the brake fluid out as I can. I do have my safety glasses on just in case, but hopefully this will stop them from coming all the way out once they've at least gotten out to this point, then maybe we can go ahead and wiggle, the, wiggle them the rest of the way out. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the compressed air in here. Okay, so maybe 100 PSI was too much for the first try, but it looks like we got two of the pistons to come out completely. Um, the other two doesn't, doesn't even look like they budge. So I'm gonna press these back in there a little bit because that piston, has come completely out. So I'll need to get a bigger block of wood. So I'm going to go ahead and get this push, this piston pushed back in. I'm going to find uh, maybe it, maybe put two pieces of plywood together and then I'll, I'll try to get these other two out. I've got a larger piece of wood. So I've turned my compressor down to 85 PSI and, and let's see if that's enough to get these out. Yeah. So it looks like all four of them have come out. So let me see if I can get the they look like they're going to be pretty close. So let me try to get these out by hand. So they're still a little snug. So I'm going to, this block, this, this block actually is a little bit thinner in one direction. So I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, put this back in here and apply a little more compressed air and see if that goes, go ahead and forces those out. All right, so this one piston wanted to, it, it just wants to come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can pry these out the rest of the way by hand. Um, there is quite a bit of fluid still inside there. I did end up putting the blocks back in and giving it a little more compressed air just to help get a little bit more wiggle room on the pistons, but they, they basically three of them came out really easily. And then this last one, you know, I just kind of had to work, work it back and forth. And actually these, it, these extended snap ring pliers fit quite nicely over this and was able to give me enough grip to pull it right out. But um, anyway, so I got them all out of here. They are, like I said, they're actually in really, really good shape. There is some surface rust on the inside, which that should clean out pretty well. So I'm gonna get the pistons out of the second caliper. And then once I have them all out, I'll show you, you know, just, you know, quickly talk about the parts, but uh, more or less, that's it. Once we've got these out, then we can go ahead and put the new parts in after these are cleaned up. So now that we have all the pistons out, the only thing that we have left to get out is the, the O-ring, which is, is right here in the groove on all four pistons. So uh, I'm just using my pick tool and again, just, just get that out just like we did on the back brake. We'll get those out on both calipers and then that'll be the finished disassembly. And then I'll go get these shot with some uh, brake parts cleaner to get this, uh, this uh, brake fluid off of them. So I've let all these dry after spraying them off with brake parts cleaner. You know, some surface rust corrosion inside but you know all the all the bodies on the piston are actually really good shape but i'll go ahead and use the same methods i did with the, the rear calipers you know, using my rotary tool with various uh implements and um, some steel wool to get these cleaned up so i'm gonna get these cleaned and then after that we'll be able to assemble the front brakes after lots of sanding and cleaning and i did let them sit overnight and some metal rescue to see if i can get some of the more of the rust uh, out of the inside it's fairly well pitted but 
you know, the, the, uh, the walls of the pistons at least are very smooth and shiny. And I don't think there's going to be any issue with these sealing. Um, really for the assembly, I'm going to need a little bit of brake fluid, the factory service manual. Basically you coat, uh, you coat these fairly well in brake fluid. The rebuild kit came with this, uh, grease. I'm going to use that for all the O-rings and the dust boots. And I'm not hundred percent sure where these little washers, these are like little small, uh, O-rings. I'm not sure where they go. I'm, th I'm, I'm thinking that they may go on the, the bleeder valves, but I couldn't find anything in the factory service manual. And when I took these apart, I didn't find anything that needed to come out like that. So, um, not sure about these, but I'll hold on to them and maybe they'll be obvious when I, I take the bleeder valves apart or something. So, uh, essentially, I'm going to get uh, all these uh, O-rings rubbed down with grease and get them put inside the caliper. And so I'll build one of these and again it'll just be the same process seven times. I will note that I did spend a lot of time cleaning the inside of these calipers out, making sure that there were no remnants of, of, of the oil, uh, brake fluid, any debris. I did go around to make sure that all the walls were smooth to make sure I don't have any significant issues with, um, you know, any gouging or anything like that. And they were all in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these O-rings in and then I'll check back in when we go to install the pistons. So now for the pistons, like I said, I've made sure that they're clean. There's no gouges or scratching at least on, on the, uh, the part that will, you know, ride down inside the caliper itself. So they're all good to go. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is put the dust boot on first. Uh, this rep this requires some grease. So I'm going to go ahead and get these greased up and go ahead and get them, you know, place them over, um, the piston like that. And then once this is greased up and once, um, you know, everything is ready to go into the caliper, then I'll apply a liberal amount of, of brake fluid around the, uh, the piston itself, press it in, and then the last thing I'll have to do is put this, uh, this ring around the dust boot to secure it on the caliper. Doubted all that I could do, knowing what I need to do. All I can say, the word is thank you. I think it's what you need to put. From the shore, amongst the waves, exactly where I want to be. I am where I want to be. So it is a very, very tight fit, but it basically you don't you want to apply even pressure pushing them in so that they don't, uh, that, you know, they start making contact with the, the bore. So anyway, now that they're pressed all the way in, this rubber boot basically, you know, just naturally falls down around the lip here uh, for the, the bore. And the last step for this will be applying this retaining ring on the boot. And so I think the ideal situation would be to make sure that where it's cut, you have it either on this side or the other side to where I just found it easier to remove uh, in the, when I was taking these apart to have access to where these are split so that I can get uh, get my tool in there if I need to, to get them off. But, um, and actually these could have been cut a little, it looks like they're a little loose. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to set that one on completely flush. It looks like I do need to, I would need to trim a little bit of the, uh, the ring back because it's, it's creating a larger diameter than what it's intended to seal. So, I'll see how that does, and if I if I feel like there's any any concern, I'll get a pair of um, snips out and, and cut that a little bit shorter. But but that's it. So the piston's back in. I've got the dust boot on. I've got the retaining ring on, and now we're just going to repeat that seven times. Um, so if I had any tips or tricks to say about this project, I would say that these little rings that hold the dust boot on are probably the more finicky parts. I did end up trimming about an eighth of an inch off of each one. Uh, because I seem to make the fit a little bit better. And I did find that sometimes if I put them on, they had a tendency to pop back off. If I rotated the ring 180 degrees, 
and pushed it back on, then that seemed to usually fix the problem. But you know, they're not that difficult other than they just, there's not a lot for them to hold on to. So they, they want to have a tendency to slip off. So anyway, that's it. They, I've got all these pistons back in. And um, so now really all I have left to do is to paint and get them back on the car. And so um, I'm not really gonna go in too depth of that process because there's lots of videos out there about painting calipers, but just go a couple light coats of primer and then a couple light coats of the paint. Uh, and then, you know, I may go ahead and once I've got the, the paint on there, I may come back and sand the Mazda logo and the uh, Sumitomo just to kind of let those pop out and then I'll clear coat everything to give it a little extra protection. Um, but while I'm doing the painting process, I'm also going to be working on getting some of the parts on the car cleaned up. Uh, you know, the hubs, uh, the, the parking brake lines, the dust shield. So while I've got the wheels off and before I get these put back on and the rotors, I will go ahead and get the, uh, you know, some of the components on the car cleaned up. Building the front brakes is significantly easier than building the rebuilding the rear brakes just because you don't have as many parts. And, and all things considered there, you know, you shouldn't have to deal with as much rust and corrosion because these are, you know, magnesium or aluminum or whatever they are. If you have any questions, please put those down below. Also, if you happen to have any suggestions or tips on how I could have done this differently so that people that come and watch this video in the future, um, you know, may have, may be able to read those and, and get, uh, get something done more efficiently than I did. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get these all cleaned up with degreaser again. If you like this video, please consider subscribing give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time.